Welcome back my fellow mobile gamers. Today we're gonna probably end up destroying my voice as I'm gonna rant a bit about the new Game of Thrones mobile game, which is a game I'm sure a lot of Game of Thrones fans have really been looking forward to. And even though I haven't yet found the time to actually sit down and watch the series myself, I was also really looking forward to this game. But for some reason, somewhere along the way, the developers of this game decided to turn this into a hilariously bad experience. So grab your pitchforks guys, grab your torches because today we're gonna dive in now this game at its core is a hero collection gacha game which is not a bad idea for a game that has an existing fan base and a large roster of interesting characters that players want to unlock because they've fallen in love with their personalities but the execution of this game is just a mess and the gameplay is just straight up boring not to mention that the pool rates aka the chances of unlocking the heroes you're actually interested in getting from the gacha unlocking mechanics are way 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 too low in comparison to the competition these days. This idea of being able to play with your favorite characters is what's supposed to make the game an awesome experience for Game of Thrones fans, but this game is failing miserably. Now, at least they tried to make a main menu that's somewhat interactive and interesting, letting us swipe to look around this little village here, a bit like we saw it in my video on the The Seven Deadly Sins game, but when that's the only positive thing you can say about the game, you just know that something is wrong, and I frankly can't find much else that I like about Game of Thrones beyond the wall sadly. During actual gameplay nothing is really that interesting either. We've got a cool grid based setup though which could be the start of something good. I mean you guys know I freaking love the hex grid based combat found in Heroes of Might and Magic. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 might just be my favorite game of all time but the lack of interesting attacks and the lack of variety in characters makes it all feel bland and boring in this game. I suppose the only redeeming factor is that we've got an auto system because then at least we don't have to actually play the game. But even as an auto gameplay sit back and enjoy the movie type of experience there's nothing interesting to look at the graphics don't particularly impress me and everything is zoomed out so much on the playing field that you can barely see what's going on and the only thing remotely interesting is the slow-mo effect when landing a killing blow but even that doesn't look that great and that's if we even get into combat before the energy system kicks in and limits us from playing the game in the first place. Listen, here's a little tidbit of advice. When you have created a game that nobody actually wants to play, at least, at least make sure that those who are generous enough to still play the game can actually play it instead of being stopped every 15 minutes to recover energy. But okay, at least there's then interesting lore and some really cool quests to explore, right? I mean, Game of Thrones is supposed to have good writing, right? But of course not. Not even that is on par with what you'd expect, or at least what I would expect, from a high-quality mobile game. For example, there are no English voiceovers in this game. Even low-quality Chinese games that have been translated to English typically have some sort of voiceover these days, and this is supposed to be a freaking Game of Thrones game, one of the biggest and most well-liked TV shows. I can only conclude that they modeled this game after the last episodes of the show. I guess they didn't really get the memo that nobody liked those episodes. I haven't even watched the series, and even I know that. And listen guys, this rant of mine has nothing to do with the fact that this is a gacha hero collector RPG. I personally love myself a good, well-made and properly designed gacha game, but this, this game just feels like a game that was supposed to have released seven years ago. A good gacha RPG gives us an interesting world to explore through quests and lore, awesome combat scenarios, high quality animations and plenty of premium currency so that we can compete, but we have to pay or grind a lot if we want a specific hero or a specific skin for that hero. And I never thought I should say this, and hold on now, you guys might want to sit down before you hear this, but if you want some Something like what this game has to offer, you might as well just play Raid Shadow Legends. That's also a horrible game, don't get me wrong, it's a really bad game, don't play it, but at least it's a horrible game making so much money that you know it will still be around in a year or two as well, whereas I'm not so sure how long this one is gonna last, and it frankly wouldn't surprise me if this game is gone in a year. But hey, what can we do, right? I mean, some people just want to squeeze us mobile gamers out of everything we've got, it seems. Especially our wallets, but also our time, but mostly our wallets. And I think the best thing we can do when we find games like this is just warn each other about them. And I hope that's what I've done with this video. And if you want to find some actual good games instead, just have a look around my channel for a bit. And if you like what you see, you can always subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated. Wink, wink. Because I cover new great mobile games in every new video around here, except 
for the occasional rant like this one. But to round things up on a bit more of a high note, here's the nugget of mobile gaming news that I always end these videos off with. And today's news is that the upcoming racing game Forza Street has now gotten an official release date, which means it is scheduled to land both on Android and on iOS at the same time on the 5th of May 2020, so in just a few short weeks from now. And if you're interested in this game, I would recommend checking it out just as it releases, if nothing else than just to collect the free Founders Pack that includes a 2017 Ford GT. Now, there's no news on how the monetization will work yet, but I'm expecting a high-quality game with a monetization system primarily focused on paying to customize the look of our cars and then maybe paying to unlock some last-tier super fancy cars immediately. And I'll probably freak out if there's another energy system also implemented in that game. So let's see what happens. I will be sure to cover it as soon as it's out. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.